Why is the mass media so afraid of Ron Paul? Because Ron Paul is anti-war. And the corporate media is a bullhorn for the Pentagon. Even with the internet breaking the mass media's monopoly, the majority of Americans still get their news from TV. You cannot get elected without press coverage. Because no one will know who you are or what you stand for without the media. They always ask Ron Paul why he has so much support from young people. The answer is simple. Younger people grew up using the internet. If you don't think so, ask any Ron Paul supporter how they first heard about Ron Paul. They will tell you, either on the internet or something that told them to go to the internet. Wars are always started by deception, and the liar's pulpit is the TV. War propaganda and political control begin and are sustained by control over mass media. Control the media, and you control the government. So who owns ABC and NBC, CBS, Fox? It's all part of the Iron Triangle. The press, the military industrial complex, and the government. America spends more money on defense than all of the other countries in the world combined. And a higher cost doesn't necessarily equate to stronger. It just means more expensive. Projects are built not because they're more efficient or because they work better, but because they cost more. On the contrary, things are made with every bell and whistle possible and involving as many industries as possible in order to gander more money from the government welfare goose. Let's have a look at the top contracted defense industries. This is the largest umbrella corporation in the world. Government employees and defense contractor employees overlap to such a degree that it's hard to tell where one stops and the other begins. And they get around this in several ways. They don't have to directly be related on the board of directors. They can have a spouse that's involved with it. They can be hired as a consultant or as an advisor or a historian or a speech giver. There are a multitude of ways to stick a government employee on the payroll of a company that's getting no-bid contracts through the mediums of war. And did several videos on that here and here with specific examples. But now let's have a look at the mass media. Each media outlet answers to a parent company. CBS to Viacom, CNN to AOL Time Warner, ABC to Disney, MSNBC to Microsoft and General Electric, and Fox News to Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. They host the debates, they ask the questions, they control the coverage, they censor or remove polls that they don't like, and they flat out lie. Here we have the board of directorate members of CBS and Boeing, connected through J.P. Morgan, of CBS and General Dynamics, connected through J.P. Morgan, of CBS and Northrop Grumman, connected through Amgen, and of CBS and Lockheed Martin, also connected through Amgen. Here we have ABC, connected to General Dynamics through Morgan Stanley. We have ABC, connected to the Foreign of Council Relations to Lockheed Martin, through John E. Bryson, ABC connected to the California Institute of Technology to Northrop Grumman, also through John E. Bryson, and ABC connected directly to Boeing, again through John E. Bryson. GE or MSNBC connected through Motorola to Boeing, connected to General Dynamics through J.P. Morgan, connected to Northrop Grumman directly through Kevin Scherer, and connected to Lockheed Martin through Catalyst. AOL Time Warner, that's CNN, connected to Lockheed Martin through Catalyst. Connected to General Dynamics to the RAND Corporation. Directly connected to Boeing. And also connected to the Raytheon Company through Citigroup. And Fox is connected to Boeing through American Express. To General Dynamics through J.P. Morgan. To Lockheed Martin through Partnership for Public Service. And it's even worse when you get to Israeli companies. They're all direct connections. That's only how these companies have overlapping board of directorate members with direct control over company policy. It is not including the overlapping membership with government employees, which are all throughout the office of the vice president and the Department of Defense primarily, but also in the president's cabinet and the upper echelons of Congress. It's just a who's who of a corporate plutocracy. This is why they're scared to death of Ron Paul and why they censor Ron Paul. Ron Paul is anti-war. 
and being pro-peace goes against the Zionist interests and the military industrial complex interests because they have overlapping financial motivations. They are lying. They are lying about Iran. Iran is not building a nuclear weapon. What they are scared of is that Iran will actually build nuclear power for electricity. Once they have nuclear power for electricity, it frees up all the oil they're currently using on electricity. All the oil they currently use could be placed on the open market, which would drive down the oil prices. In East Asia, another power player, and could challenge the U.S. economic and militarily as the sole superpower. But if you don't look at it in terms of how it benefits the kings, if you look at it and how it benefits people, humans, it's better for all of us for more oil to go on the market so our standard of living will go up and our cost of living will go down. The real threat that Iran poses is the oil and gas pipeline through Pakistan into India, which breaks Israel's keyhole monopoly from the BTC oil currently coming from the Caspian region, which is non-OPEC oil and very important. It goes through Azerbaijan to Georgia to Turkey and down through Israel. They don't like that and the U.S. doesn't like it either. The U.S. doesn't like China and Russia selling gas. They don't want anybody to have independence. They want everyone under the thumb and beholden to U.S. power. And that's not in the benefit of American people. That is only to the benefit for a very tiny, minute minority of elites, I hate that word, who profit from monopolies and government protectionism. That is all. They are harming billions of people through sanctions on food, through the intentional depreciation of currencies, intentional debt games, fraud, theft, and outright murder. The CIA promotes the illegal drug trade, illegal arms sales, and they use illegal weapons and torture. The only real threat to the American way of life isn't abroad in some desert. It's sitting in the White House. What's driving America into debt What's eroding the Constitution and eroding your civil liberties and rights and allowing a police state is not Iran. It's the United States government and its Israeli buddies. Iran doesn't have nukes. Israel does. Iran's not a threat to the Middle East or regional instability. Israel is. Iran hasn't attacked the United States in false flag operations. Israel has. Iran doesn't demand three billion dollars a year. Israel does. So we don't need to be putting sanctions on Iran we need to be putting sanctions on Israel until they clean up their act. I'd prefer to not have sanctions on anyone, but I don't see the Zionist power changing one iota of anything they do without coercion. We are run by literal psychopaths. I don't mean lunatics, I'm talking about clinical psychopaths. They are in charge, and we've got to change things, and it has to be grassroots. It's got to come from us, it's got to come from the web, and we've got to build a viable alternative media that doesn't drift off into the cuckoo forest or use fear-mongering to sell DVDs. Ron Paul's winning delegates, let's continue this push with him as president. We could open trade with all, we could get rid of sanctions, end the war, cut trillions of dollars in wasted spending on imperialism and government welfare. And by that, I mean corporate welfare, not giving somebody that doesn't have a job money so they can eat. I'm talking about giving the hundreds of billions of dollars in no big contracts to war industries or in the form of bailouts to a bunch of banksters engaged in fraud. Get rid of the Federal Reserve. Get rid of it. Phase it out and create sound money and uphold our Constitution and Bill of Rights. We turn manufacturing to America by getting rid of all the pointless regulations. And I know some people think regulations are important, but I'm talking about the regulations that actually exist. Not your fantasy regulations, but the ones that are actually there are set up as government protectionist programs for monopolies, for drug companies, for insurance companies, for manufacturing. That's how it is to keep the top on top and keep the middle from ever being able to rise. Let's break up the media put pressure on the corporate media, Ron Paul 2012, and go vote. This is Ryan Dawson of Rice Two Cents. I have more in-depth videos and maps on my website if you want to get in the nitty-gritty of this. Peace.